what would you smoke if the world was about to end? I'm glad you said that. I would smoke this guy right here. This is the new Night Stalker. Wow. I have not had the Night Stalker. Mm, well, here we go. We're going to try the new Night Stalker. Here, cut your shit. Cut it. God damn it. Jesus. No, I am glad it's the weekend. I am too. Now I'm going to get heavily intoxicated and run around my neighborhood and <coughs> scream at the top of my lungs. Murder people? No. I want a lawyer. <laughs> so. <sighs> Deny it and then ask for a lawyer. <laughs> Isn't that how it normally goes? So the notes, Shut the dry pool, fig, uh, wood, molasses, believe it or not, whatever, whatever that tastes like, but yes, molasses, wood. Mm. So October 17th. We will be present at the Mesquite, ugh, words, Mesquite PD Golf Tournament, or the Mesquite Police Association Golf Tournament. We're sponsoring it. We're going to be there with cigars. We're going to be having a good time. And I'm going to quote Caddyshack every five minutes. Noonan. It's on a Monday. It's on a Monday. Who plays golf on a Monday? Golfers. But let me tell you something. The people that do play golf on a Monday are definitely, definitely all-stars. Yeah, because they're going to be getting some cigars. Have you thought more on a plan of world domination? Yeah. I have. I have. Full air. You might slightly be a psychopath, you know that. It takes one to know one. <laughs> you know, so a while back I took a psychopath test because mm. I murdered 14 people. So the person telling me that I'm a psycho is the only one in the room that took a psychopath test. Well, I just gave the reason why I took it. But anyways, so it gave like visual. It gave visuals. And it said like, do you see these moving? And it's like uh, the mind trick pictures where oh, it's, you know, they all move. Well, apparently a psychopath's brain mm -hmm. usually can detect that stuff. Mm. And it won't actually move for them. It's weird. That's interesting. Yeah. So, that being said. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is good. Oh, yeah. It is unique. What is the blend? Connecticut wrapper. Nicaraguan filler. American Connecticut, like the other one? Of course. Of so, course. Connecticut with Nicaraguan filler. Yep. That's it? Yep. That's it. Hmm. Oh. Remember Nicaragua is having that hurricane. Yep. Apparently, uh, Nicaragua is about to be hit by a hurricane. Well, this Sunday, apparently, but we'll see. So, pray to the cigar gods that the tobacco is not disrupted where we get our stuff from. Yeah. That will be an issue. Um... So, October 17th, we got the uh, golf tournament. November. Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'll probably, we'll probably get banned if I, if I, if I continue that. that. Most likely. Uh, you know. November 9th. That's the golf tournament? No, November 9th is our event at El Dorado Cigars and Rock Wall. Oh, yeah. I think one week. We need to get him on a podcast. I agree. Um, what is weird <laughs> to like do stupid shit to make it look like you're holding a microphone? Oh uh, yeah, people do it all the time. Eat shit. Like I've seen where people like tape it to their magazines, the magazines of their gun, and hold it, hold it up to them. I've seen it where people tape it to like their sunglasses and stupid shit. Where are your sunglasses? I gave you some last last week. In the car. Mm. Oh god. Um, so here's the deal. Random fact, tobacco fact, San Andres tobacco is not cultivated like any ordinary tobacco leaf, where ordinary tobacco leaves are picked by leaf by leaf. When San Andres is stalk, they cut it up the stalk and take the whole plant and hang it upside down. The more you know. They hang it upside down and they beat it senseless with the baseball bat until it gives them the answers they want. Those are effective dart strategy. Yeah. You know... Eventually. What? Eventually our empire will spread further than this office. Eventually. Soon. It will spread. So... This is, here's the deal. Um, we need to go to the gun range. We haven't been to the gun range in a while. I said that last week. I know, but I'm going to say it every week till we do it. It's a good idea. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned this in last week's podcast, but I did a ride out with our local police department that previous Saturday. It's always good to do a ride out even though prior law enforcement, but it's still good to do a ride out every now and again just to show your support. It also gives you a perspective of what's going on in your city and what law enforcement what law enforcement is having to deal with nowadays. So I've been out of it for a few years now, and uh, uh, from what I've observed, uh, times have changed quite a bit. How many people did you meet up? lawyer no it was a good ride out uh nothing really happened it was a relatively slow night isn't that your curse was yeah it, wasn't that your curse yeah i have a uh, and even while i was in law enforcement i had a uh, peace cloud that followed me uh, i'd go on shift nothing would happen my entire shift that's good all my days that i would work nothing happened <laughs> the days i was off shit would hit the fan Every time. Well, that's kind of a good thing in a way. Yeah, it is. And it happened on the ride out. Uh, nothing happened. Very few calls. Nothing really, nothing too exciting. And then I speak to the officer a week later on a Thursday night. And he's, 
shit was popping off. Multiple gunshots, canines, helicopters, grenades, the whole shebang. Yeah. Yeah. If someone had a doom dozer driving through the street. Mm. You know what I want to get? A 40 millimeter grenade launcher. I know something to say on the internet. But... You can get them legally. You can do them. You just can't get AT rounds or anything. You can get CS gas, OC gas. You can get chalk rounds. You can get anything else except for AT. 40 millimeter chalk round. Yeah. Hmm. CS gas? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do one day when we hire some. But if we ever get to the point where we have to hire people, our new hires will have to go through an initiation process. Yeah, basically, where we have them all in an interview room, all, no, five to six of them all in one room. Uh, Nicole will sit them down. But, okay, they'll be right with you. Mm -hmm. And I'll just throw the door open wearing some sort of stupid ass mask and launch two 40 millimeter CS gas grenades into the room and then close it and lock the door. And whoever. Sticks around after that, we'll be hired. We'll probably get fucking sued. I can only assume so. But still, it'd be fun. And we video it, of course. And if that person <laughs> stays with the company, we will, uh, their one year anniversary of them being with Cigars of Hour, we will show that video to them. You think they're just going to forget? That day, I want to remind them. So after that, just peace, peace, peace and quiet. Yeah, that's it. Just their initiation. Yeah, is an experience of trauma. And then, but that's going to be the final interview. Uh, there's going to be a series of interviews. The first and second one will be just uh, me, him, and Nicole interviewing these people one on one. We're going to be smoking cigars, like freight training cigars, in a really small room. <laughs> And, <laughs> and uh, just to weed out the people that are not mentally fit for this job. And then the final interview will be hell. You know, is this for Cigars of Valor or Code 1? Both. Okay. So are we, do we still have the idea of having the uh, connoisseur in, in a suit inside the of human course, door 24-7? Yeah. Absolutely. So... We have an idea when we open a shop. We're going to hire some unlucky bastard to sit in our humidor. We're going to keep it 70 degrees and 70% humidity all the time. But they're going to be sitting in there, standing in there, no sitting, wearing a three-piece suit, guiding people to the cigars they want. Yep, and they have to stay in there. Yeah, the entire time. Obviously, they get the allowed bathroom break per wall, but... They immediately come back and get back to work. Yeah. They must stay in there and sweat in the suit. And on top of that, we have a night cigar connoisseur mm. that must stay in there even when the lights are off and it's closed. You know, like that guy in John Wick that stands at the front of the, that check in counter at the hotel? How professional that guy is. We want him to be like that. Yes. The entire time, and when we're closed, we want him standing in there just like that guy does at that front counter. You know, I also want to have a phone system that when people call after hours, it says press two for after hours. Yeah. Amenities? After services. hours services. That's what it is. And we'll have for a hitman, press one. Mm. Airdrops, two. And Mercenary teams, three. Hot extract, four. Carpet bombing, five. <laughs> Napalm. God. No, so we have so many ideas for this shop we're going to open up. And uh, some, most of them will probably get us soon. But it's the journey that matters, right? You know, we planned on having a office... 
mm. in the back area. So mm. you have the uh, the lounge in the front, mm -hmm. humidor, and then in the back's like an office. And we want to make sure that we have those god awful shitty like five dollar blinds you buy at Walmart. And they have to be the all metal ones that are destructive. Like you touch them and they snap, like those shitty blinds. So and, like the ones that every apartment complex uses. Yeah, somehow they have a stockpile of those. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm, I don't even think they make them anymore. Oh, I'm sure they do. Well, my apartment still have them. They still put them in. Unless just no one destroyed them yet. So we're going to have those in the back. We'll have a meeting and be like, guys, excuse us for a second. We'll go back there. And we're going to have like farm animals, all sorts of things, making noises back there. We're going to throw stuff across the room, break tables, you know, just make a uh, absolute shit we're show. We're also going to have a fog machine, an industrial fog machine <laughs> yeah. going at full tilt in there. So yeah. when we open the door, a, fog, there's a plume of smoke and fog comes out of this room. And we're doing this just to see the reactions of the people sitting in the lounge. Yeah. Only reason we're doing it. When in reality, we're just sitting in there smoking cigars. We're going to have an audio track recorded of all this shit playing on a surround system in the room. So it's going to sound like it. Nothing's really going on. It's one of the greatest plans ever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm sure people will find that very entertaining. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to have periodic parties, like a toga party. Uh, poker party, cigar party with real illegal gambling. Ryan, there's just some things you don't say while on camera and mic up. And for example, you don't want to openly admit to breaking a law in the future. I'll, I'll take note of that. You should see our lawyer. We pay him a lot of money. $800 an hour. Mm -hmm. That's really how much it costs. You know, I watched that movie. No, no. Like, I actually, when I was messing with all that crypto stuff, we had a lawyer. He was $800 an hour. And you know what he did? Nothing. Nothing. Mm. He didn't do shit. Because lawyers are useless. Yeah. Nothing lawyers. You know, what is that? We'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, the end of the world can't come soon enough. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Did you just not notice that? Yeah, I did. Funny. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to do anymore. Just I don't know. What just accept it. I don't. I don't. Even, I don't even know. <laughs> just accept it. I don't, I don't even know. You know, Travis and I <sighs> have <sighs> quite a while in our lives that we have done things. Please fucking elaborate on that. <laughs> Please elaborate on that. We have been together. <sighs> Just kidding. Um, we've done a lot of crazy shit. Um, there's a lot we can't talk about. Uh, I have a loaded 357 right next to me. And I will use it. A lot we can't talk about. However, there is some that we can talk about. Does robbing that bank count? I said elaborate. It didn't, I didn't mean elaborate that well. No, can we, can we talk about that? No, we cannot talk about the bank that we hypothetically robbed. Okay. In Greta Auto. <laughs> yeah, the juggernaut suits. Yeah. You remember that?
Oh. I, I'm trying to parse my mind and remember things. But I feel like you shouldn't repeat <laughs> some of the things. That... There's some shit. We never did anything terrible. It was just like... Yeah. Yeah. Nothing not, terrible. Not necessarily. Yeah. You know what happens to people that talk too much? What? Especially on mic. They usually get whacked. Hmm. 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 So did they layer the steel on this? Because you can see... I don't know. It's pretty dope. It's cool. Jesus, we're fucking stalling. Um, here's what's going to happen. I got a video to show you. We don't have any way to show you the video, but you'll be able to hear it. It's pretty glorious. It's like not the most boring thing ever. No. Have you seen this video? So a little bit of context. So I guess this state trooper is damn near at retirement. I think he has a few months left, if I remember right. And some civilian fucking just triggers him. And he, uh, this, you'll see. That's something we should play. Oh, it's funny. I think it is. I like this stop. guy. Yeah. We need to figure out a system to put the videos on the recordings. Absolutely. God help you. <laughs> you know. Is it This is amazing. Where was this? Connecticut. But watch his face when he finds out where he got uh, where he works. <laughs> like he's fucking pathetic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Are you in trouble for that? Well, he's not wrong. It, this is what every officer would love to say at some point. I know I've wanted to pop off on people like this, but I didn't. Like, people don't realize, like, how stressful Absolutely. a job like that is. Yeah, it's... But just... And, there, and there's always someone ready to mm -hmm. attack you or, mm -hmm. or something. It used to not be like that. Mm -mm. Well, then people, again, people used to obey the law. People used to have respect. Yeah. They don't have respect anymore. Yes. People used to obey the law, too. There's and no more accountability. There's no discipline. There's no respect anymore. I'm going to go ahead and stop myself there. That's why we formed a militia. God. Every person that drives two miles an hour over, we're going to take them out. God damn it. I'm probably going to get taken out. All right, no, I take that back because I'll, I'll probably end up doing that. But let me just say, God, we're going to have a militia. This is Cigars of Hours. This is the last <laughs> time you will ever see us on any sort of social media platform. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Channel gets deleted. We get 10 subscribers. I'm going to get a fucking knock on my door because of this shit. Get ten subscribers and get <laughs> get completely knocked off. So we, you know, we kind of always joked about that. Eventually, one day we'll be on Unsolved Mysteries or something. Oh fuck! Oh, what's that? What's that show that they always, they have the blacked out characters like? And they There's always, so many oh, shows that. There's so many shows but, uh, that fit that profile. Uh, cigars and Valor, guys. No, we have like the... Uh, I know what you're talking about, but they... No, it's like Gangland. Yeah, Gangland. There's been a few <laughs> yeah. other ones where they've blocked out. Gangland. The Our most controversial episode yet. Code 1 Executive Services. Yeah. Uh, these guys. I don't know. You know, something. That's how you. Oh, did you notice the new sticker? Oh. Yeah. They asked us uh, when I was there because we told them. I told them we were going to open up a storefront eventually, and they said, "Have you looked? Have we thought about opening the ski?" And uh, um, I told them we're thinking about it. Yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, indefinitely think about that. Do they have cigar shops in Mesquite? One. I just, I don't know. I feel like there's just not enough law abiding citizens in that city. God damn. You know, maybe, maybe there is now. Wouldn't hurt to look into it. At least give. You know, I tell you what. If we sold drugs out of the back of the store, we could open We're not it up. Do that. We could open up in Balt Springs. We went from being a relatively neutral podcast to being a very much controversial. Podcast. Well, I mean. Not necessarily. Who's, who knows that? Uh, you know, I'm joking. So, uh, that being said, when we do open a shop, we will have some positions open to uh, work in the shop. And yes, you will have to go through the hiring process that I described earlier. It's going to happen. Yep, so expect it. If you want, you want to work for a good company, then deal with it. You 
You're a disgrace to this organization. That's the nicest thing you've ever said. Trying to keep this thing from flopping over. It's still lit up. Is it? I don't know. I can't see it. Yes, it's lit up. Oh, I heard you on that. What? You know, we could talk about the uh, cornhole tournament. We did. Oh, yeah. We went to this cornhole tournament at Enfuego. The, uh, was it Saturday that we went? Pretty good time. I drank a lot of beer. I drank a lot of beer. I drank a lot of beer. We had a pretty good burger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty good burger. Uh, we sponsored the event. Uh, it was pretty good. Pretty good time. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, naturally, I'm, I've never played cornhole a day in my life, and um, it was pretty comical how terrible that was. Um, we, we lost so bad that they didn't even tell us we lost. They just said, hey, good game, man. Yeah. You know, at one point, we were getting wrecked so hard that this guy, he would call out the score for us. And I told him, I was like, you know, you don't, you don't have to say the score so loudly. You know, like, people know you're winning. Yeah, it's pretty fucking obvious. It was brutal. It was very brutal. We need to bring them on the show. Torment them. Do the CS gas chamber with them. What we need to do <laughs> is super glue the tear ducts in our eyes. God. And then train with CS gas continuously. And then during the podcast, we'll set one off in here. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we just put on a gas mask right before we do it and not, just not give them one? I wonder. Wish we still knew some. Uh, I wish we still knew some idiots that we could uh, prank. We have. We know smoke at least a cigar. We know at least two idiots. You know, you, you could inject some like habanero pepper like halfway through. <laughs> and then while you're smoking, you're like, <laughs> "What?" I can think of two idiots right now. Okay. They both start with a J. Jack and Jill. You know, uh -huh. let me tell you something. So, what's up? What do you want? I knew this guy. I went to New Orleans once. And <coughs> what he told me is absolutely one of the most important things I've ever heard in my entire life. After these messages. There's... There's no messages. Oh. Okay. So, I knew this guy. <laughs> Once. <laughs> And he went to New Orleans. Uh, and he told me one of the most important things. How many how, how many seconds did I waste on that? Because it seems like when you watch like a National Geographic show or a show on the History Channel, yeah. about 18 minutes of it is them repeating the same thing over and over again for you to be. Well, anticipated. I can tell you, you've wasted 25 seconds just describing <laughs> that one piece there. So. Yeah. Good, good. Well, I don't want you to feel about that statement is like that. Because in reality, it is the greatest thing I've ever heard after these messages from our sponsor. And we're back because we have no sponsors. <sighs> By the way, we're open to sponsors. <laughs> 
uh, preferably if you're an ammunition company or yeah, if you want to send us ammo to discharge in a for our future gun channel that we will probably never have because there's so many of those already on the social media. Yeah, I tell you what Planet. we can do. We can blow up. We can blow up various different guns, and then make videos about them. We could do that. Get them to self destruct, and then blame it on them. What's the most reliable gun ever made? Uh, that's extremely controversial. There, it's all. Uh, Watch this high point explode. Yeah, except for that one. That's you know, not controversial. I that's went to this. Known. I went to this well-known academic store, and everyone will probably know exactly what I just said there. Um, and yes, it's that. It's exactly what you just thought of. It is that. All right, so I went there and I, I was buying. A, I was trying to buy a gun. I was trying to find a um, Hellcat, a uh, Springfield Hellcat, and the guy in there tried to sell me on a high point. He's like, "Oh, I these are that. these are one of the most reliable guns ever made," and I laughed because I thought he was just kidding. And he's like, "No, they're great." Well, I have heard that some of them are reliable, but no one wants. A 19, you know, if you're going out to buy like a new laptop, you don't want a computer made in 1994, you know, a you big, don't. bulky, disgusting computer, you know. So it's like when you're going out to buy a pistol, a high point is literally like an AliExpress gun. So, yeah, sure, it probably fires, it's probably accurate, it's probably great. But I don't want this disgusting, oversized pistol. I mean, do they even have double stack mags? I Probably not. So, just when I go in there to buy a freaking concealed firearm or a subcompact firearm that I can conceal, I don't want to buy a full size 1975 MacBook, okay? <laughs> like, I want a gun that I can conceal. <laughs> It's like concealing this. That's a high point. Hey. They're better than a high point. But caught more. They are cheap guns. Very. I mean, but then again, like you just find used pistols pretty cheap now. But yeah, you could uh never mind, I'm just not gonna just not gonna finish that. <laughs> oh god you know I wish my brain was such full of information like Russ Martin uh, well, where well, they could just talk an episode they have a team of people that work an entire week uh, they work weeks upon weeks on content for one show What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Spit the fuck over. This room's radioactive. Oh! And I'm back. Shut up, it works. <laughs> you have anything radioactive in here? Nope. At least ain't nothing I'm going to admit on camera. Okay, that is something you definitely don't fucking say on camera. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, shut the fuck up. All right. So, oh, I got a... Uh... I've been wanting to get one for a long time. Put a part of the bug out back. Got a uh, radiation detector on eBay. It's like 
twenty bucks. Something like that. Are you gonna put your life in the hands of a twenty dollar? Mm-hmm. What's that called again? Geiger counter. Twenty dollar Geiger counter. He's gonna trust. Why not? Would I you mean, trust a Chinese car to get in a wreck? No. Okay. Anyways. But let me tell you something. It does work. For some reason, you are very unradioactive. Good. Good? All right. Anyways, uh, let's talk about uh, something related to cigars. So, I have another new one. Please remove that from the top of my, uh, thank you. <sighs> Anyways, I have a new cigar, another new cigar in there that will be consumed next week on, on that podcast. This is a going to be a product of the Cigars of Our R&D department as not even in the uh, not even close to being ready to be released, if you will. Every time. Yep. Why do they always call like five minutes before five? I don't know. You ever notice that? Yeah. Last time it was like the same time. Yeah, so that one I'll disclose the the contents of that one later on. Here, I'll show you the cigar, though. I will show you. Get that away from the fucking cigars. <laughs> well, how is that going to ruin cigars? God damn it. All right, well, explain... Oh, God. Maybe it'd help if you fucking labeled them. Shut the fuck up. These are new ones. That's not a new one. All right. So here it is. What is it? I'll disclose the contents at a later date. Have you ever noticed some people like get mad at you for smelling a cigar? Yeah, those people get mad at you over everything. If you when, use the wrong when, type of cut, they get mad at you. If you use the wrong when, type of lighter. When you can like clearly smell it and tell what it is. But. Uh, just some people bitch about everything. Yeah. I know. Why do we have that out again? Oh, this mess works. Um, you know what my favorite what are my favorite cigars are what? Uh, that's not ours the LFD cabinet number 5 that is a fantastic cigar and as a gift I have brought for you an LFD cabinet number 5 That is a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper with Dominican filler. And it is exquisite. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. That is a fantastic cigar right there. That smells divine. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I want you to uh, make again? What? Uh, the one year. The old one year. The original sample. Mm-hmm. Love um, to get my hands on one of those. Yeah. We have 200 of them coming in at the end of this month. Hmm. And I will gladly share 100 of those with whoever. Who, who should we share that with? I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll share it with someone. Maybe if you come to our events. Yeah. We might have one. Then what? If you come to our events and you ask for one, we mm. may have one. Mm. I got a challenge for you. Any law enforcement that want, that watch this, if you send us a patch or a challenge coin, I will send you one of these one-year blanks. They are limited batch. Extremely limited. You can't find them anywhere. Not on the website, not in the brick and mortars. Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to get is from us. Is it test, testers. They were testers that we... And we can't even get a large batch of them. because No. Because of the blend in it. Uh -huh. So, send us a patch or a challenge coin. We will send you one of these. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, just to make it more exclusive, only 50. We're going to send out only 50 of them. Hey, so pretty soon, we're working on a new idea for a studio, different studio. Mm -hmm. um, now, we were kind of thinking of a way to design it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's going to probably the beginning of November. We will be, uh, it'll be a different setting in here, different backdrop. Yep. So we can put those challenge coins we got like, in a case on the wall. And... I'm going to do all the patches I have. That's going to take a big ass case. We'll uh, put a, a green screen mm -hmm. in there. Yep. Um, yeah, green screen would be perfect. We can do quite a bit in there. Mm -hmm. We finally will have a place we can do the weekly executions. Mm -hmm. See, there's carpet in here, and it just it doesn't mix well. No, because we have to have that professionally cleaned every week. Yeah. The first like three times, it was terrible, and it. I then we had to we had to whack the guy that came and tried to clean the carpet because he said he was going to call the cops. And yeah. Said, That's not happening. Yeah, so he was on our next week's execution. But, like, yeah. it, you know, like, and, and also, too, the, the stains are there forever. You know, like, we had to cut a square out of the floor over here, and it. It's like that movie. <laughs> I can't say that. We, I don't think we can say the movie. You probably could. Pain and Gain? Yeah. When they kill the guy on the carpet, instead of cutting out the all the carpet out of that room, they cut out the little squares, each individual square that has blood on it. <laughs> <laughs> and left the, the rest of the carpet instead of just cutting all the fucking carpet out doesn't the uh, the cleanup crews after like an incident like that don't they just cut the squares out uh, I'm not sure I thought I remember them doing that like they'll just cut out where the blood was and then like the sheetrock too I don't know You were praying over it. It's a good primer. Yeah. I watch enough CSI to know that does not work. Paint over it? I mean, you just use the paint the apartments use. Yeah. But, like, I don't even understand how they get a paint that's that thick. And then they paint like 50 layers over stuff, too. So it's like you, yeah. you peel off a piece of the wall and it's like peeling plasti dip off a car. That's disgusting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully November comes around. Oh, and the, what about tobacco doches? Yep, forgot about that. 
Uh, we're, that's not going to re really be a Cigars of Valor event. Yeah, it's not, but uh, Travis will be there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, so uh, we are also, as far as future shops, we're talking to a shop that will be opening in Sherman, Texas. Mm -hmm. mm, we're going to go talk to some shops in Fort Worth and one in Abilene. And, uh, yeah. Fun little drive. I've never been to West Texas. Not missing anything. Yeah. Uh, there's some pretty parts out there. I imagine. I, uh, I went there once on a flight simulator. That's it? Yeah. Uh, so, here's the deal. I don't even know anymore. I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. Here, I'm going to give you a... We're going to test your knowledge. I'm going to start a new segment. What, not good enough for you? Uh, I've, I've reached my limit a lot. Too strong? No, it's good. Very, very mild cigar. Mm. Too mild, huh? No, it's Connecticut. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a scenario. Scenario. Okay. I want you to tell me how you would handle this scenario. I'll tell you already right now and shoot him in the head. No. Um, you go in for a job interview. Mm -hmm. They sit you down at the table. They put a bowl of cereal and milk in front of you with only a butter knife. Mm -hmm. How are you going to consume that bowl of cereal and milk? Okay, so it's a bowl of cereal and milk in it? Yeah, I'd pick up the bowl and fucking drink it. There you go. All right, another one. They tell they walk you into a room. They close you in there. They open the other side of the room. There's a cage and a pissed off bobcat that is in heat walks out of that cage and is walking around the room stalking you. What do you do? I would pet it because cats are nice. You know, I could go in the cage and lock myself in the cage. Right? <laughs> but one side of the room is the door. The other side of the room is a cage and there's a bobcat that's really pissed off in between you and that cage. Why not just turn around and walk the fuck back out? I don't know. You took away the door. I never did take it away. It's always been there. Okay. Well, if the door was there, you obviously walk the fuck out. But like, <laughs> you know, if, if it is a code one executive challenge, uh, you're probably expected to kill it. So, yep. Just kick it really hard in the head. Yeah. yeah. Um, another scenario, a little bit more on the serious side. Mm -hmm. Do you and your significant other are out? Consuming dinner at a well-known restaurant. So you're having dinner. Consuming dinner in a well-known restaurant. You're concealed carrying. Yeah. Subject walks through the door, waving a gun around, saying, this is a robbery, give me all your money. He's walking around from booth to booth, holding everyone up. What are you going to do? I would take the gun out, put it to my head, and pull the trigger. We can go. No. And then he'll get murder charged. <laughs> God, no. Um, 
I mean, it's variable by variable. So it absolutely is. Yes. Um, you know, if there's a point where you could draw on him, that would be ideal. Absolutely. Um, now, pulling some sort of John Wick scenario Jesus or something, you would probably gross. die. Yeah. Most likely. It, it's, you know, that, that, that was always like the thing, the issue I have with open carry. Yeah. Is when you open carry, you're the first target. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's better to be the person that you don't know is carrying. Absolutely. Element of surprise. I'll tell you what I would do. I'd call the cops and wait for them to come. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 50 minutes later. Uh, that scenario, they'd probably get there pretty quick. But uh, in depends, reality... It depends on the city. It'd probably and it's be, not the cops' fault. It is not. It's... Uh, every agency being shorthanded right now. Yeah. So the, the joke was that you don't need a gun, you just call the cops. Yeah. Um. Why not just give them your wallet? But if you draw on them, you know what you could do? You could take all the money and stuff out of your wallet and just throw it on the floor under the booth and then just hand them your wallet and be like, here. Yeah, you could. Didn't think about that. All right. Here's another one. Mm -hmm. You have an op. You have several choices of gun in this scenario. You have an AR-556-223, mm -hmm. 12-gauge shotgun with double-op buck, and nine millimeter, whatever grain, whatever fucking round you you normally carry in your sure. in your gun. Sure. Someone's breaking into your apartment. They're kicking open your front door. You're laying in bed. You have seconds to react. All three guns are within your immediate reach. Which one are you going to grab and use to defend your apartment? A shotgun. Yes. Why is that? Because rounds go through walls. Maybe not the nine millimeter. It, it would, but you know, you would have less of a chance that that would go through. It, I don't want it. More chance. than likely would. Um, With, but double up buck could also do it sometimes. Uh, it, it could go through a wall. So what's so ideal? Would, would you want to use bird shot? in a home evasion scenario or like an apartment honestly i have never messed with shotgun rounds we're gonna change that yeah follow us to this journey i'm just kidding oh nothing happened we use uh the car yes yeah. car lot next to us <laughs> test the round yeah so ideal i would say use bird shot in you know close range you know apartment scenario because just the fear of over penetration and hitting someone in the apartment next to you that is again everyone knows you're accountable for what leaves that barrel well you know firing a gun off is really loud okay especially it is inside a house oh, I never, or inside I never an that. apartment and that alone would probably freak them out on top of that, then you got to clean up after this. Yeah. You have pellets absolutely. all on your wall. Yeah. And then you got to move to a new unit because obviously they're not going to keep you in the same unit that has brains splattered all over the sheetrock. So. And then the smell. Yeah. Brain matter does smell. God, that's all. <laughs> all right. So, seriously, if you want to work in our soon be a uh, shop feel free to shoot us a message uh, just be aware of the initiation and the interview process it's only the strong will survive and you go through an extensive background investigation done by me whatever that means but I would be prepared
All right. Well, that just about wraps up this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so we hope to see you guys at our events, future events. Thank you. And, uh, you know, suggestions on content would be cool, but nobody ever does that. So no. Don't expect it. Um, no. Now, I uh, think, you know, we, we plan on having more extravagant things as we kind of figure out our palette for this channel. This is a probably a more controversial episode. And yeah, we're uh, going to trigger some people with this. One. Yeah. So well, we'll see how good. it is. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. Negative publicity is good yeah. publicity. Um, again, the, off, the, the thing, whatever the fuck you want to call it is still out there. If you own a gun range or know anyone that has a gun range that would be willing to host us or let us have a party there, not necessarily a party that sounds stupid, but an event there, like a gun range day mm -hmm. with cigars and a pub cigars. Style event. Yeah, there you go. Uh, feel free to let us know. And we will be starting a Patreon in the future. And the Patreon would definitely be more controversial. Yeah, the Patreon will have our content that would uh, not be suitable for uh, YouTube yes. and all those other platforms. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have a few ideas, but we need a gun range. Could do some wacko conspiracy stuff on that. That right there. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Piss off. Eat shit.